Welcome back. So today, as a native Californian, I've lived here in Orange County my whole life. I'm going to be watching uh, what if a mega earthquake hit California. So I'm curious to see what they, they talk about. They'll probably bring up past earthquakes that we've had. And since um, the big one is supposed to hit here eventually, and we've been overdue by, I don't even know how long, 50 years or something on the big one that's supposed to hit. Uh, I'm just kind of curious to see what uh, what this video has to say for uh, me living in California. So I'm going to react to it and give you my thoughts. Um, I know it's probably weird to some of the world, but we have uh, drills throughout school and everyone goes under their desk and kind of holds on and covers your head. So we do that every year um, as I was going through school. So just kind of one of the weird things that we do here in California, maybe just the whole West Coast. I'm not sure, but uh yeah, I'm, I'm very near, uh, I guess, near the San Andreas Fault. Goes through California, shoots up the, uh, kind, of, kind of near the coast, and it goes up. So let's see what this is uh, like. Catastrophic earthquake scenarios have played out on the silver screen for decades. Terrifying it's very over, viewers with overly dramatic, that's for sure. Or topple entire cities. Talking about a uh, tsunami, I don't even think tsunamis are. I know there's just a San Andreas film, but I don't think a tsunami would occur. I don't think any of the faults off in the Pacific are the ones that would trigger a tsunami. I was in some geography, uh, geology, and I guess both class um, in college, and we learned about this. I, I forget the fault names, but. Uh, they generally will slide or kind of go underneath. They won't kind of drop off and it won't occur. That's why I don't think there's ever been a recording of a tsunami in the West Coast, um, but definitely not California because these faults are not like that. So this is maybe impossible, but you never know. Entire cities. Here's what will happen if the big one hits the West Coast. The big one, the big one. Who knows, On that July might be possible. 4th, 2019, Ridgecrest, California was hit I remember with a 6.4 magnitude earthquake and then a 7.1 just one day later. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. So I'm pausing it a lot, but uh, yeah, I was playing games with my friends for the second one when it hit. And the first one, I think I was uh, I was playing something. And then, yeah, it was, it was two days in a row. And uh, I filmed one of them, um, like the water shaking. Um, and lights just kind of swaying. It wasn't bad where I was in Orange County, but you definitely felt it. It was, it was quick too. Both of them are very quick. But neither of these compare to the long-awaited big one, which scientists predict will eventually rattle the Golden Coast. But when it hits, what will that actually look like? Here's yes. what experts say could happen in the seconds, hours, and days after the big one. While experts can't know exactly when a quake will occur, they have a pretty good idea of where. California is located in a hot zone of fault lines. The most notorious of them, the San Andreas Fault. Yes. You know, here in California, you have dangers from a number of different kinds of earthquakes. You know, the major danger is from the earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault system. On average, the San Andreas Fault ruptures every 150 years. Yeah, 150 years, and I think we're something like 50 years overdue, or, or we're overdue for an earthquake. Um, and you could actually walk in the San Andreas Fault. There's, there's points where you get to go down into it uh, i don't know if i would do that but if you're wanting a thrill you could go into the san andreas fault but southern Scary. parts of the fault have remained inactive for over 200 years we, there we go 50 years uh, haven't had a big difference. earthquake in southern california and really since 1857 in other words we're overdue for a major shake according to a 2008 That's federal sad. report the most likely scenario is a 7.8 magnitude quake that would rupture a 200 mile stretch along the southernmost part of the fault. It's basically moving the... I see where I am, just south of LA. It, it is very close though for a fault that large. It's huge, it's huge. And I think they compared this fault. It's the same kind as one in Turkey. So I think we study theirs and they study ours and we help each other out and, and stuff like that. So yeah, very similar to the one in Turkey. Ground uh, several yards over an area of 
50 square miles. Yeah, and Los Angeles is bad too. Maybe they'll talk about this as well. Um, you kind of see like the red part in this video. Um, it's uh, it's in a basin and it's going to be prone to liquefaction. Just all the sediment from the surrounding mountains have just settled there for you know millions and millions of years. So uh, yeah, liquefaction will kind of shake it all up and the uh, water table will kind of move up through it and it'll destabilize just the LA basin in general. So it's extra scary there. So you know, the power of magnitude 7.8 earthquake is probably close to the power used in the whole state for a year. Basically something that we as a civilization have trouble creating with short of like a nuclear explosion. If you're near the epicenter of the earthquake, it will be nearly impossible to stand. People have this yeah, idea scary. of running out of bed, out of their buildings, and that, that's a terrible idea because a lot of what we see in earthquakes is people with broken legs and people who run through glass. And the best thing to do, like we always say, is duck cover and hold. Get under some piece of furniture, and you know, the main yep. point is to yep. like protect we did in your school. head and chest. During and immediately following the shaking, buildings could collapse. The number of buildings that were constructed before about 1980 is really significant, and most of these buildings are very vulnerable to damage and collapse. In this time-lapse video, you can see how building components would hold up in a high-magnitude earthquake. Because the San Andreas will produce the kind of long-period shaking, which would be uh, very damaging to very yeah. tall buildings, say in downtown LA and Century City and Long Beach and so forth. Older steel buildings, the connections in them have not necessarily been designed to withstand the maximum forces that actually can be generated. Yeah. Unreinforced structures are the least stable, but even buildings up to code could crumble. The building code, with its minimum requirements, does not ensure that the building will be serviceable after an earthquake. It's intended yeah, to no way. not kill anybody. There's a sense that if it's modern, code designed, it's earthquake proof and everything should be great, but that's not the reality. Five steel high rises could collapse completely while 10 others will be red tagged or- Yeah, I remember my, uh, one of my buildings, the business building at the school, the college I went to, um, pretty much when they're building it or when it was nearly completed, there's a decent earthquake and now, uh, there's kind of these tiny little cracks that run through the floor everywhere. It's kind of like spidering through different sections of it. Not bad, and you, you can't really notice. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of one of those interesting things. And that was like everything was new up to code. Really, really nice building, but uh, an earthquake hit it like right at the end of construction. Or unsafe to enter. And no, the quake would not cause a tsunami. Just Said that as well. Said that as well. <laughs> would not. Well, let's we'll see what they have to say, though. By what movies would have you believe? To trigger a tsunami, it takes an earthquake that moves the ocean floor. And most of the San Andreas is on land. So there'd be a little bit of waves generated from a San Andreas earthquake, but nothing that'd be dangerous. The quake could kill about 1,800 people and leave 50,000 or more with injuries. While people could die from falling debris and collapsed structures, the highest death toll would be from fires. Historically, yeah. the biggest like hazard San Francisco. from earthquakes has been history. Fire. In the 1906 uh, earthquake, there were three or four thousand people there we go. who were just San caught Francisco in that wave got of wiped fire out. It was gone. The, city. the aftermath of the big one will wreak havoc on infrastructure and the economy. Below our streets mm -hmm. um, and our yeah, the California's economy in general is the fifth largest economy in the world, uh, beating out like UK most recently. I think last year. Um, yeah, we just make more more money here. And I forget what percent of the U.S. Um, economy is from California, but yeah, California's economy is bigger than the than like India and uh, Russia, UK. Et cetera, et cetera. It's 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 massive. So this would be huge. This would wipe out California's economy for a, a good while. Our buildings is this really complicated network of, of infrastructure that could be damaged, and a lot of the mm -hmm. things we take for granted every day won't be available anymore. Right, like water, electricity, bridges everywhere too. To it's very hilly. To drive. 
Parts of the San Andreas Fault intersect with 39 gas and oil pipelines. This could rupture high-pressure gas lines, releasing gas into the air and igniting potentially deadly explosions. That's scary. Explosions. explosions could just randomly if just you pop up gas lines around that rupture, you. That's how you can get fire and explosions. And after the fires burn out, one of the biggest concerns in a major earthquake is access to fresh water. The major yeah. aqueduct networks that pump water into Southern California all cross the wow. San Andreas Fault and could be seriously damaged. So we would be without the lifelines that bring in imported water to the region. They cross through tunnels, cross through aqueducts near the surface. All of these would be ruptured, and so we would be losing 60% of our water supply. Many of these distribution lines for water are near sewer lines, which would also be broken. So yeah, now you makes... have a situation where contaminants are potentially getting into the water supply. Experts say you should keep at least a two-week supply of water in your home. As the ground shakes and sediments shift, there will be landslides throughout the if you live in California, just near some disaster zone, do you do that? Do you keep that much water supply with you at least two weeks? We used to. I mean, we have a pool. I guess we could just drink out of that. <laughs> we need the chlorine. But yeah, we don't have like just straight up fresh water anymore. We used to. Just big jugs. In Western Los Angeles County. Let me know in the comments if you there do or how you prepare. There have been earthquakes that have produced thousands. Landslides definitely can cause fatalities, property damage. Uh, we have a lot of people who live up in the hills, right? And so that's the location where you would be likely to a see. A lot of homes and just the hills effect. everywhere. And finally, the big one will severely impact the economy. Major transportation yeah. networks like highways and railways could be unusable for weeks and even months. Some bridges may not be passable um, after an earthquake. We've had bridges collapse during past Could be earthquakes. years, honestly. It could definitely be years. The industries leave, population loss, and this could have you know devastating long-term impacts for the region. Yep. The estimated financial cost of the big one is a whopping $200 billion, with $33 billion in building damages and $50 billion in lost economic activity. This yeah, all sounds imagine. pretty bad, but keep in mind that this is based off of a worst-case scenario. The true impact of a major earthquake is based on a range of unknowable factors. Also, smaller earthquakes on faults directly beneath major population centers are this a serious a concern. But the worst case earthquakes are hard to predict. You know, that earthquake in Japan in 2011, their cost almost entirely came because their nuclear power plant uh, melted down. It's very hard to predict what's going to fail in a big earthquake. Yeah. So, how can Californians prepare for the big one? You really have a plan in place. You know, where are you going to meet? What are you going to do? Have water ready. I have a 55-gallon drum full of water. There's some chemical additive I put. So raid his house. That's that's step one for water if you uh, if you need it. Put in it so it's potable for five years. Just kidding. 55 gallons is the right amount for my. I have a family of four. That'll last us for two weeks. Canned food. You know you have to be ready. Um, I would say it's best just to plan to stay, sort of where you are. Getting out of LA. Is bad enough without an earthquake, right? Traffic's already terrible. It's, it's if awful. Roads are closed all the and time. People are all trying to leave. It's going to really be bad. Yeah, that's true. You might want to wait a while, even if you have that two-week supply. Maybe even wait wait a couple days and keep an eye on it, just to see what what's going around. Um, and you honestly probably couldn't even leave if it was that bad. You probably couldn't even leave LA because once again, there's there's so many hills everywhere. There's so many bridges. I don't know if you could get around that i don't know if you get and if you'd want to trust that especially with your family to go over these bridges um, and other infrastructure throughout yeah that, that would be um it's one of those things that you can't really prepare enough and you don't know how to prepare for it effectively because you just don't know what's going to happen um that's yeah, interesting i want to i want to watch more of these these videos especially this one living in california just seeing how what I've learned about it, because I've, I've lived with it my whole life, there's there's earthquakes every year. Um, and every day there's there's hundreds of them. I think they're just so small that you don't really feel them. It's nothing like Japan, uh, but it's, it's still every year you'll get a, 
a, a jolt and most of them are just really quick most of them are within a couple seconds or just like uh ones that i've had one where just a few years ago it just dropped you just felt everything just boom drop and my my chair moved an inch that was an interesting one but most of them are very small um yeah i'm gonna do more of these for sure um in the future and uh everything california or orange county and give you uh give you my thoughts on them and my reaction and uh as a local to see if it's uh see if it's interesting so thanks for watching i hope you learned something i did i, I think these are very interesting it's just just living here um and living it and having some stories to tell you and i will catch you all next time